Welcome to the housing here coming at you with a movie review of Class of nineteen eighty four. This is directed by Mark L. Lester, director of Firestarter, showing well Tokyo. And yeah, this is a very good underrated high school revenge thriller movie. It's like in the realm of like the substitute and the principal. And other movies that had deal with like piece of shit kids that disrespect teachers and treat them like shit, and they're just the scum of the world. That just disrespectful motherfuckers and mean fucks. But this is a very good one, very underrated flick, starring Perry King from Day After Tomorrow and the. Damn it, I forgot that Greaser movie was called. It's they didn't credit him next to his name, but it's that Greaser movie with him and um uh Henry Winkler and um Sylvester Stallone. Which I still gotta check that one out, but I know that they talk about it in the special features in his interview, but he talks about the movie. But Perry King plays the lead character Andrew Norris, who's like a new substitute that transfers into this high school. And he's harassed by a group of kids that are just a bunch of delinquent assholes that treat everybody like shit. And of course, he's accompanied with his teacher friend that's played by Honey McDowell, who is in the Planet of the Apes films. He was in the original Fright Night and Fright Night 2. Good actor, Honey McDowell. And... He, he does have a lot of emotion, too. Like Rodney McDowell, where he's dealing with these sounds of bitches that are mean fucks. And even has emotional place face during the movie, what they did to his room and stuff. But Perry King plays this Andrew Norris character that's playing, that's like the substitute of music class, helping out his students to like improve their music and stuff because the teacher quit so he's taking over as a, as a teacher and of course they're getting harassed by this Nazi skin I don't know how they call them surfing Nazi they're not surfing Nazi but but they do like the Nazi salute and stuff in the first part of the movie but they're led by Peter Stangman, who is like played by Timothy Van Payden, who was in Catacombs. He plays a real fucking scumbag. Was it Timothy Van Payden? He does a good job playing a real son of a bitch in this movie where he's like such an evil prick. Because he does that shit well done in the movie where he's a He's a straight up piece of shit character that treats everybody like shit and he's an asshole to everybody. But when he's like by his mom and he's like, oh, Mr. Mr. Norris punched me. Don't let him in, mommy. Like he's trying to act all baby to his mommy and trying to act like all innocent. And yeah, of course, there's the movie. It's so fucked up when he's like hitting his face on the wall, making himself bleed. And rubbing the blood all over Mr. Norris's hands. And like, he punched me, security guard. He punched me. Get him away from me. Like, what a scumbag. Like, what a straight up piece of shit character that's well acted by Timothy Van Payton. Did a good job playing a real hateful prick. And yeah, the cast is pretty good. Michael, an early Michael J. Fox act, acting right here because I think it was one of his first movies. But yeah, very young Michael J. Fox here before Back to the Future and Teen Wolf. He has a small part in this movie, but they stab his character in the middle part of the movie, which is sad. But he luckily survived the movie. character, survived the movie. And the movie just goes on about how Norris is dealing with these assholes. They're like sort of punk rock kid, 
like kind of like characters from like characters from suburbia but the the ones in suburbia could kick their asses and know that these pricks are rude sons of bitches but they harass everybody of course they're selling drugs to nerds and one nerd is high on drug going on the flagpole and he accidentally falls and slips and dies from the fall and of course they're get they're attacking Michael J Fox and her, and a fellow girl student that's with him they're pin they pin them through an alley and they're like harassing and beating them up and then Nish Norris and and Ronnie McDowell come to the stage to stop what they're doing but they're attacked by the gang and the gang are chicken shit motherfuckers and they run away like cowards what they're doing and stuff and of course the principal is a piece of shit too because the principal doesn't do jack shit it seems like even the law doesn't give a shit too even the detective that's involved in this doesn't give a rat's ass about what's going on and doesn't really care about convicting these types of bitches for what they're doing even like uh, like later in the movie when they're like they're not going to charge them for what they did to Rodney McDonald's classroom and also the fucked up stuff they did in his classroom where they wrecked everything because he there because they wanted more targets between Ryan McDowell and Mr. Norris. And all in all, it's just very stupid, mean shit that they're doing. Because they go into his classroom, and Ryan McDowell is so dead inside where he sees all his pet animals that are like for science, mutilated, butchered, and killed. Like all of his lab rats and his lab rabbits. All butchered and killed and one of them's hanging on the roof. You could tell he was so dead inside that he wants to kill these motherfuckers. And of course, he goes deranged because one day he sees them in the class and he's pointing the gun at them and teaching them lessons about science and lectures. And he's about to kill one of them, but Norris has to calm him down and try to stop him from what he's doing. And you could tell he's dead inside from what these jackasses have been doing. And of course, he tries to kill him after school, trying to run him the, the leader over. But he gets the car blown. The the car just runs over on the side and blows up, and he dies. And of course. Mr. Of course, and like Mr. Norris is like visiting, uh, what is it, the character's name, uh, P, like Stagman's mom, who's like the one that answers the door, and Stagman's like living in this rich life because he has like a rich house, like an apartment, like oh he has a nice life, but he's with his punk ass friends that just treat everybody like shit and sell dope on the, on the side and like and of course he's just such a mommy's boy he's like he's like don't let him in mommy he's the man that beat me up and of course like the mom's all defending his his sorry ass you beat my boy up now get out of here you son of a bitch Mr. Mrs. Mrs. Stegman you don't understand about your son he's deranged he's evil Of course, he's not taking no more shit after the door is closed. So he goes to the parking lot, trashes Stankman's car, fucking the shit up. And of course, Stankman goes back to the class and I'm getting all pissed at the teacher. And of course, they want to go after Norris. Of course, they do that after Norris has a talk with his wife about the talent show, about deciding to move and stuff and having going somewhere that she's getting ready and then boom Stagman and his gangs are like invading his house and 
they they gang rape his wife in a disturbing matter, but it's not like like too much like it's long and that shit. Which I don't like to watch that shit. Well, if somebody likes that, then then they're fucked up in the head. But, but all in all, it's not like too much like Death Wish too. But it is really disturbing to watch that stuff. But it's like in and out between Norris getting ready for the talent show with his music band, and it's really fucked up. And then they take her as a hostage, and they picture what's going on with the gang rape and. They send one picture to like Norris and showing what happened and they have his wife and he gets out of the stadium auditorium and goes after them and of course they beat him up. They think they got him, but he's ready to kill these motherfuckers, take no names and kick ass like a motherfucker by killing one of them, by blowing them up and burning them. Burn in hell burning the motherfucker up and then fighting another dude where they're in a workshop woodshop class and they're fighting punching each other and of course the the saw is spinning and grabbing the guy's arm chopping the arm off good practical blood effects and then of course he punches the guy and the guy's back falls on the saw sawing him in the back and killing him of course, the other scumbag sees him, and they're going after Norris. And then Norris has a trap and ready, trying to block him, but it goes through, and they have like big fight, fistful fight with the big dude. And I forgot one of the um, what is it? One of the big dudes is played by by uh, Keith Knight. Yeah, because one of the one of the big dudes that's like the one of the scumbags in the gang is played by Keith Knight, who was uh, Hollis in the original My Bloody Valentine movie. So like that was the same actor. And of course, you can recognize his voice too, like the way he yells, because that's how Hollis yells in the My Bloody Valentine. But he has that big fight with that guy that plays Hollis. Big fist full fight with the big dude and. Of course, the girl in the gang tries to run him over the car, but she hits and runs over the big dude that's that the Hollis character, and boom, she crashes and then she dies from injuries. But Norris grabs her by the head and like squeezing her face. Where's my wife? Of course, telling him that she's with Stagman and they're up in the roof. So he goes up to the roof. And find Stegman slicing and cutting his wife's cheek. And Norris and Stegman have like this big old fistful fight. Punching the knife out of his hand. And kicking ass like a motherfucker. Like teaching this dude a lesson that he fucking deserves. And when another, the fight leads to like Stegman falling on the window glass. And like he's like, I'm, so, I'm sorry, Mr. St Mr. Norris, help me. Please get me up out of this. I need some help. Please just grab my hand. And of course, Norris is trying to like almost fall for it, but Stegman has a knife and he's about to cut Norris, but Norris moves out of the way and punches the motherfucker in the face and the dude falls down and Stegman is wrapped by a bunch of wire ropes that was by the, by under that was under him and it crashes through like the auditorium that the musical the music band is playing at the auditorium and everybody's all freaked out screaming and Stegman is hanging by the ropes and got what he deserved. Norris is reunited with his wife and from this sons of these mean sons of bitches that treated everybody like shit and that were ruling the school by being mean fucks to the teachers, to the students, and to everybody. But Norris was not taking no more shit after he saw what they did to his wife. He wasn't taking no more shit. He was fucking these motherfuckers up. 
But yeah, got his revenge at the end. This is such a good revenge movie, folks, from the 80s. If you never seen Mark L. Lester's ninth movie from 1984 or it's 1982, my mistake. It's just I'm I'm used to the the name. I thought the it came out the year 194, but the movie's called Class of 1984. It came out in the year 1990. No, wait, 1982. Directed by Mark L. Lester, and Mark L. Lester directed a lot of good shit. Firestarter. I'm not big on Firestarter, but I would say I rather watch the original Firestarter than the shitty remake. But I didn't mind some. I do. I don't mind some scenes, and it. it's not my favorite Stephen King movie. But I do not mind Firestarter. But Mark L. Lester did other movies too. Even Showdown Little Tokyo, um, Commando with Arnold Schwarzenegger. That's a good movie with Arnie kissing, ticking ass like a motherfucker. And yeah, Mark L. Lester is a pretty good director, and Tom Holland. Greater Fright Night, Child's Play, the original OG Child's Play, then made, he made it what it was, Child's Play and Psycho 2. And even John Saxon was in the, in the screenplay, which is surprising because John Saxon was involved in also the, the screenplay for Happy Birthday to me. But yeah. Mark L. Lester, John Saxton, and Tom Holland did the script. They did the screenplay. And directed by Mark L. Lester, and starring Perry King, Timothy Van Payden, Mario Day Fox, and Ronnie McDowell. But yeah, this is a very good movie, folks. If you've never seen this movie, highly recommend it. If you like a revenge, sort of thriller movie, but like a kick-ass revenge movie like movies like death wish Vintilante, kill bill you'll get a kicked out of this movie this movie is really good but yeah hit the like subscribe and take care folks have a good day bye bye, -bye.